Hello! What I'm going to do today is a torque problem, so a static equilibrium problem, that is a little bit easier than some of the other ones. I would call this a C-level problem rather than an A-level problem. So this is a good one to start with. There's no angles involved. It's just a bunch of forces and using the ideas of static equilibrium. So let's figure out what we've got. Our problem. Jeeves and Wooster are playing around on a long 10 kilogram plank. The plank has two supports, one two meters from the left end and the other four meters from the right end. Jeeves, who has uh, 50 kilograms of mass, stands on the left end of the nine meter long plank. Wooster, at 75 kilograms, walks towards the other side of the plank. Can Wooster walk all the way to the right end of the plank without it tipping over? If not, how far can he walk before it just starts to tip? All right, so with static equilibrium torque problems, we follow mostly our usual problem solving process. Let's start with a picture. So we have a long plank and we've got Jeeves standing on one end. So this is Jeeves. And we've got Wooster walking this way towards the other end. And let's see, the plank has two supports. One is two meters from the, right, the left hand end. So there's a support and this here is two meters. And the other is four meters from the right end, so like somewhere around here, where that distance is four meters. All right, what else do we know? Well, I guess that's our picture. We have two people standing on a plank with two supports. What do we know? We know the mass of Jeeves is 50 kilograms. We know the mass of Wooster is 75 kilograms. The mass of the plank is 10 kilograms. We've got those distances. Oh, what else do we know? Um, that's about it. <laughs> so we've got those two distances. We've got the mass of Jeeves, of Wooster, and the plank. We want to know, can Wooster walk to the right end without it tipping to the right side? And if not, where does it tip? If he can't get walk all the way to here, where does it tip? Okay. So that's our standard start, picture, knowns, unknown. And then typically with a force problem, we would go and do a force diagram. But now we care about where the forces act, we're gonna do what we call an extended force diagram. Because we need to know what forces are acting on the object and also where. So the object of interest is usually the long skinny thing. In this case, the plank. Uh, it might be a beam, it might be a seesaw or a teeter-totter. Here is going to be the beam. And it doesn't really matter what the shape is, just draw it as a long skinny thing. So I have a long skinny thing and that's, that's my object of interest, the plank. So what forces act on the plank and where do they act? So if we look at them, we'll say Wooster and Jeeves definitely are exerting downward forces equal to their weight. And Jeeves is exerting that force of the weight of Jeeves is at the right hand end. And Wooster, we don't know where he is. The question is, can he walk all the way to the right side without it tipping? And if not, where does it tip? So I'm going to say, well, let's solve for where does it tip? And if it's more than four meters, then he's okay. And if it's less than four meters here, then he's not okay. So I'm going to say he's somewhere over here. I don't know exactly where. And we're going to have the weight of Wooster acting down somewhere. We're not sure where. The weight of the plank, if it's a long uniform plank, in most of these cases you can assume it's a long uniform object. That means the force of gravity is going to act right in the middle. So we've got the weight of the plank itself. And don't stop there because this thing isn't in equilibrium. Right now, this thing is accelerating downwards. What is supporting it? What's keeping up? It, keeping it up? The two supports. So I have the upward force here, and that's a normal force. You can call it a normal force. It is a support force. And then we've got another one around here. Let's call that normal number two. All right, so the two supporting forces act up. 
the weight of Jeeves, the weight of Wooster, the weight of the plank acting down. I don't see that it interacts with anything else. I think this is it. So this is the extended force diagram where we have all the forces that act and where they're acting. At this point, we want to choose a pivot point. So there's lots of different ways to choose a pivot point. Oftentimes, there's a physically realistic point where this thing would rotate. If you don't have one that's physically realistic, then what I tend to do is pick a pivot point that gets rid of the most number of unknowns. Now here, if we have the big plank, here's my, here's my big plank. Let's go one more. So here's my plank, and we have a support force here, support force here. Wooster's gonna keep walking out, and let's say it does tip at some point. We don't know where, but let's say it does tip. Where would it rotate about if it's gonna tip? If you think about it, it's gonna rotate about this point. It's gonna go whoop, so right on that point, right there. This one's gonna lift off, and this one's gonna rotate right about that fulcrum or support or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna choose that as my pivot point where the normal force, where the support force is. So I'm picking my pivot point right there to start with. And you can choose different pivot points and still get the same answer, but not all pivot points are gonna get you the answer in a very sensible way. So we could solve this a different way using a different pivot point, but for now I'm just gonna say, this is the physically realistic one, so I'll ch check that one. I'll use that one. Okay, so we're going to say this is our force diagram. We've got our pivot point, and I want to set it up so that it is just about to tip. So if this thing is just about to tip, what do we know about this force, the normal force of this support? If it's just about to tip, this thing is just leaving contact, just moving, removing itself from contact, which means that this normal force is gonna go to zero. We've seen this before in circular motion. At the top, when you fall off the top of a loop-the-loop, -loop, the normal force goes to zero. So let's see what we get with this. All right, what we do with equilibrium is we have two conditions for equilibrium. We add up all the torques and set them equal to zero. That means it's not rotating left or right. And then we add up all the forces and set them equal to zero. That means it's not accelerating up or down. It's not accelerating left or right. So there's, we usually end up with three different equations. In this case, I don't see any left-right forces, so it's a little simpler. Two, we only end up with two equations. Okay, so equilibrium, the sum of the torques or the net torque, however you want to think about it, has to add up to zero. So we add up all the torques, set them equal to zero. And the torque, just remember, the torque is the perpendicular force times the distance from the pivot. I have one, two, three, four, five forces, which means I could have up to five torques. How many of these forces are actually going to cause a torque? Well, this one is not because it's at the pivot point. The radius is zero. So this one won't cause a torque if I pick my pivot point right here. This one will, this one will, this one will, this one will. So we have four torques to deal with out of five forces. So let's just go through and figure them all out. Okay, so the first torque is gonna be caused by the weight of Jeeves. Okay, so we've got the weight of Jeeves and that is already perpendicular, so we don't need to worry about sines or cosines. The radius is in this direction, the force is in this direction, we're all good. Um, and it's acting at what distance from the pivot? Okay, so the distance from here to here is gonna be what? Well, I know this is two meters and I know this is four meters, and the length of the, piv the plank, I was given that too, so. The length of the plank was nine meters total, which means if we have nine total, minus four gives me five left, minus two, I'm left with three meters between the two supports. All right, so the weight of Jeeves is gonna be, the distance at which it acts is the distance from here to here, five meters. 
Okay, so we've got the weight of Jeeves acting at five meters. Is that a positive or a negative torque? And remember, this is often opposite of what you want it to be. Clockwise is a negative torque. Counterclockwise is a positive torque. So does this cause counterclockwise or clockwise rotation? So if I hold the plank steady here, this is my pivot, and I pull down on the plank, which way is it going to rotate? Well, it's going to rotate this way. That is anti-clockwise, so that is a positive torque. So that's our first torque term. So this is the torque from the weight of Jeeves. All right, now we've got this one. We've got the force is normal one and it's perpendicular, so we don't have to worry about that. The distance from the pivot point is the distance from here to here. Well, that's three meters, so that's my three meters. Is it positive or negative? Again, hold it steady here, so it's gonna rotate about this point. If I pull up on the plank, it's gonna rotate clockwise. That is a negative torque. We've got two more. We've got the weight of the plank, and again, that's gonna be these three, these two have to have the same sign. They're both causing boop, that direction. So plus the weight of the plank acting, whoa, okay. How far from the pivot point is this? We're making an assumption that the weight of the plank acts in the middle of the plank. If that is a nine meter plank, the middle is at 4.5 meters. So the weight of the plank is acting kind of right here at 4.5 meters from each end. So that's 4.5, this is 4.5 meters. We want to know how far this force is from this pivot. So here to here. Well this was 4 meters and this was 4.5 meters. That means we're half a meter away. 0.5 meters away. And that's a positive. Okay, and we don't have a torque from N2 because the radius is zero. Now the weight of Wooster. So the force is the weight of Wooster. It's acting at, uh, what distance do we have? The distance from this pivot point to where Wooster is. We don't know that. We don't know it. So I'm just going to say we're going to call that x. That's kind of what we're looking for. How far can he walk before it starts to tip? So I'm going to call that just my unknown x. That's what I'm kind of trying to figure out. And which direction of a torque is it? Hold this steady, yank down, it's going to be causing that direction clockwise, which is negative. And that's it. I'm going to add them all up and set them equal to zero. So this is my static equilibrium condition for the torques. So my equation for the torques. I can also do the sum of the forces in the y direction, which is F net y, which is equal to zero, add up all the forces in the y direction, set them equal to zero, plus normal one, plus normal two, minus the weight of Jeeves, minus the weight of the plank, minus the weight of Wooster, equals zero. So that's my force condition, and then this monster here, hoo -hoo, is my torque condition for static equilibrium. All right, now we had figured out, we want to figure out, sorry, x. How far can Wooster walk before it starts to tip? And if I look through, I say, well, I know the weight of Jeeves. Well, I can figure it out. I know the mass, so I can get weight. I know that. Don't know that. I know that. I know the weight there, that, that, and I don't know that. So I have two unknowns. And I have another equation here, but that adds another unknown. So between these two equations, I have three unknowns. You might stop there and say, I can't solve this. But let's go back to what we said about the tipping point. When this thing is about to tip, when it's at the tipping point, the plank loses contact with this support. So the normal force of this support goes to zero. So I'm going to say that force goes to zero, which means this force goes to zero. Now I have an equation where I know absolutely everything except x. So I'm going to have to convert all these to weights. So the weight of Jeeves would be 50 kilograms times 9.8, which would be 490 newtons. Um, let's get rid of that. The weight of Wooster, 75 times 9.8, 735 I think, yep, 735 newtons. The weight of the plank, 
10 times 9.8, you can do that one in your head, 98 newtons. So we know all the weights, we can solve it for x. And if you do the math, what you end up with is you get an x of 3.4 meters. Now what does that mean? Does it mean that it's going to tip over? Can he walk to the end? What is that number? Well, that is the distance here that we said is the distance from the pivot point to where the weight of Wooster is acting. So it's how far away from this pivot point Wooster can walk right to get to that tipping point. So 3.4 meters. So from this support force right here, he can go 3.4 meters. Well, is that shorter than the four meters here? Yeah. So it tips when he is 3.4 meters beyond this support force. A better way to say it is the board tips when Wooster is, let's see, it would be 0.6 meters from the right end of the plank. So that would be the answer I'm looking for. Does it tip? It, well, can he walk to the right-hand side? Nope. And where does it tip? It'll tip when Wooster gets to 0.6 meters from the right-hand end. That 0.6 meters right there. Because we had 3.4 to where he is, I should say. You know, let me clean that up. Let me make that more clear what that 3.4 really represents. So it's 3.4 meters to where it tips, which means Wooster can walk to about here. And at that point, if he goes a tenth of a centimeter beyond that, it's going to start tipping. But this is right at the tipping point, and that is the answer for the problem. Is it reasonable? Well, yeah. We've got these two. Jeeves is helping hold it down on this side, and then he's heavier. Wooster's heavier by quite a bit, so I wouldn't expect him to be able to go all the way. It seems reasonable. And we've answered the question. We've got the units, 0.6 meters. And I think we've got it. So that's an example of a more straightforward Torx problem where we didn't have any angles. We had five forces. Believe me, this is an easy problem, despite five forces. One of them went to zero. One of them didn't have a torque exerted. So we only ended up with three terms. This one, this one, and this one. We were able to solve pretty easily for the unknown distance x, and then we just had to interpret the answer to figure out what was going on. So that's what we've got for a moderately easy, moderately easy uh, Torx problem, static equilibrium problem. All right, good job.